Welcome everyone to Q&A with Click. For some background to those who may be new to the series, this is the support webinar we like to call our live office hours, where users can ask their burning questions to our panel of Click experts on the given sessions topic. Today, we are piloting our first ever developer series under the Q&A umbrella to be able to reach another audience set and provide a space for these deeper technical discussions. Um, we hope to make this a regular thing. So please let us know what you'd like to hear more of under this topic. Um, and what better way to kick it off than with today's topic, which is state of the API where we will discuss all things API integration and embedded analytics. As I go through some housekeeping items for the session, I wanna start with a quick way to get everyone's brains moving. So please go to the chat feature now, and I want you to tell us what is one thing that would make your API embedded analytics development on Click super awesome. So tell us what you want to see from Click. What is the one thing that would make your API embedded development on Click super awesome? Type it in the chat now, and I will go through the rest of the basic stuff that we need to cover before we really kick it off. Um, so by means of introduction, I am a senior community program manager on our customer success experience programs team here in the global support organization. I will be your moderator. I am by no means considered a developer. <laughs> That's what we have our tech experts on the call for. Um, but I share the same passion as our expert panelists, which is enabling our users to be successful with our tools. Um, I'll be learning right alongside all of you during these sessions. Um, and our, our tech experts that we have today are our internal advocates for developing. So we're really happy to have them. Before I introduce our esteemed panelists, I'll quickly go over our session parameters. Everyone is currently on mute. So we ask that you ask your questions in our Q&A panel. We will not be using the panel to respond to your questions directly. We'll speak to them all live today. Hopefully we'll get to them all. Um, we ask that you keep the questions relevant to today's topic, which is state of the API. Our survey link will pop up at the end of the session. It's also linked in this presentation with a QR code. Please be sure to complete it. It is short and sweet and takes 15 seconds. Um, we will also email out the survey with a link to the recording exactly one week from now. So keep a look for that in your inboxes. Um, this survey is what helps us continuously improve this experience for you. And you can tell us what you wanna see next. Um, you can also email digital at click.com to give us your feedback and to give topic ideas or to ask questions that we weren't able to answer today. Um, let me scroll through. Speaking of registrations, here's a new one. We have a great subscription check mark at the bottom of our registration page. So if you want invites emailed directly to you, that is the way to do that. Um, and we just started that functionality. So we're really happy to have you join our Q&A with Click family. Keep in mind that even though we have Click experts on the line, we will not be able to answer any of your questions regarding a specific open case. And we just ask you to keep the questions relevant, as I said before. So without further ado, we have Jeff Goldberg, a product management director, one of the masterminds behind these developer webinars. We also have Dipankar Mazumdar. You're gonna to have to correct me, I stumbled on that. But he is an R&D developer advocate. And then last but not least, we have Gertrude Westrin, who is one of our junior developer advocates. We're so happy that you're all here today. I'm gonna to start backwards. Gertrude, would you like to introduce yourself? Absolutely. Hello, everyone. My name is Gertrud, and I am based off Lund, Sweden, and I am a junior developer advocate at Click, and I'm happy to have this session today. Looking forward to lots of questions. Yeah. Thank you, Gertrude. Dipankar? Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Dipankar, and I'm based out of Canada. Uh, I'm uh, part of the developer relations team here in the R&D at Click. And uh, I do all things API, embedded analytics, augmented analytics, and uh, really love engaging with the community. 
So looking forward to, to this session. Awesome. Thank you. And last but not least, Jeff, would you like to Hello, introduce everyone. yourself? Absolutely. Hi, everyone. It's great to spend some time with you today. Many of you that I see uh, in the attendee list uh, I've met in, in the past, uh, either recently or long ago. Uh, I used to work in pre-sales and I now am a product manager. I've been a product manager at Click now for over two years and I'm responsible for uh, APIs, uh, our internal API governance strategy. Uh, I've worked in our OEM and embedded capabilities. Uh, I was most recently the product manager for application automation and have recently taken over platform product manager duties, which includes our ecosystem, APIs, and and a lot of those things. So I'm thrilled to be uh, uh, here with you and joined uh, by Dipankar, Gertrude, and Katie to go through this Q&A. Uh, awesome. So I, I was going to say, Jeff, I'm pretty sure you have something to help set the scene for all of us, some, some background and a presentation to walk us through. Yep, yep. So I just wanted to say I wanted to kick this <laughs> off if I could by grabbing the screen from you. Yeah? All right, I'm going to stop sharing. Awesome. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a few minutes to go through a, a quick presentation to set the stage, right? Because um, what we want to do here with this webinar in particular is set the stage uh, for 2022 of how we're approaching uh, developer and software engineering type topics within uh, the Click platform. And our goal and our ambition is to, as Katie mentioned, is to uh, potentially have one of these open office hour sessions, these Q&A sessions with you on a uh, much more frequent basis than we have in the past. We have our Click Developer Slack channels and those are active and we really agree, uh, greatly appreciate everyone's participation there. In addition to the forum on community about extensions, integration and APIs, we also uh, really greatly appreciate everyone's contributions there. Uh, but we want to reach out and uh, try this uh, as, a, as a way to connect with you in, in more ways, connect with you more frequently, provide you with more updates of what's coming down the pipe from uh, an API and developer perspective, and, and just give you a sense of how we're thinking about things and let you tell us what you think about that. So uh, I am going to just take a few minutes to go through a couple of slides to uh, talk about the way I think about our APIs and embedded in general. I'll start with, of course, with our, our legal disclaimer, just in case I start uh, talking about roadmap and, and those sorts of things. You can see my screen okay, yes? Okay, great. Um, and then please uh, refrain from social media and, and, and no photos, although these slides are, are really nothing new. Uh, they've been presented at ClickWorld in the past and that sort of thing. Um, so, I want to start off by basically saying something that we probably all feel uh, in the work that we do as, as developers and developers that are working with uh, analytics and, and embedded, uh, embedded business intelligence, right? And the line between the concepts of embedded, right? And, and, and in a lot of cases from an OEM perspective, it's been, you know, stick this visualization over here, create a mashup over there. Uh, those lines between that type of experience that we're providing inside of web applications is really blurring with integration. And the concept of every company being uh, becoming a software company, the uh, use cases for embedded analytics and for leveraging APIs for the purposes of surfacing analytics within the workflow that people uh, go through every day in their daily work is definitely changing because uh, now companies are hiring their own, hiring back lots of software developers to build out products that they either share internally or externally. And regardless of whether those stakeholders or those end users are internal customers or external, uh, external customers, they want frictionless consumer grade experiences, right? We all have, if not most of us have one of these in our hands, we have a cell phone and that has completely changed the way that, and our expectations of how software should be delivered to us and how we should be able to interact with software and what those experiences uh, should be like. I, I was talking to someone earlier this morning on Slack and, and uh, basically, you know, 
uh, we said, the idea of you being able to, an end user's opinion of you uh, and your software happens much, much faster now. Our, our attention spans are a lot shorter because of our phones. And the time to that aha moment is, you know, fractions of a second, if not milliseconds, or even getting to nanoseconds. You look at something, it either uh, it either causes a dopamine response and you keep clicking or you move on to the next thing. And this is the same for the types of work experiences people are having, right? And that's why you're seeing deeper embedding and a lot of uh, applications cross-pollinating uh, across other ecosystems. And partners need and want integration points to be able to facilitate those types of experiences, whether it's to extend out capabilities within the Click platform itself, or to bring the Click platform into uh, bespoke solutions that they're building from the end to end. And, and, and to that end, right, the different kinds of use cases all drive around where business users work, at least as it relates to Click. And delivering those frictionless experiences within other ecosystems is what is driving uh, a lot of the products that we have today from an, uh, conversational analytics to the embedded visualizations that we've, already, uh, we've always been able to do, but now getting into things like composable analytics and, and how we leverage application automation through the experiences that we have in these uh, secondary and tertiary experiences outside of what we know uh, of, the, of the core click experience. And the market is really uh, is responding to it, right? The embedded analytics market is now estimated to be thirty six billion dollars mark a thirty six billion dollar market, and it's expected to grow almost fourteen percent annually over the next three years and become almost a, a sixty to seventy billion dollar market by twenty twenty six. So uh, there is a tremendous amount of opportunity here as it relates to embedded analytics and what customers uh, need and want in the experiences they want to be able to share and the analytics that they want to be able to share with uh, their end consumers. So from a click perspective, what have we been doing over the past year in 2021 to help help drive that? And this is a bit of an eye chart. So I'll, I'll, I'll read through it pretty quickly. Whoa, lost the headset. Um, so uh, I know many of you in the community have been using Picasso for a while now. It's been out for a number of years, but it has always kind of held that experimental status. Well, we uh, achieved a version one last year, which enabled us to provide the documentation on click.dev. And so now we've centralized that documentation. We've brought it into click.dev. It sits alongside our cloud APIs, as well as our documentation for capability API, as well as Nebula. And it's really great to have those uh, officially supported uh, releases and versions uh, available for our customers to use. Similar with Nebula JS, right? Both Picasso and Nebula are open source libraries, but we do have uh, production releases of these libraries that Click supports. Um, a lot of what people want to be able to do with Nebula is uh, very similar to the visualization API that you see inside of Cap Capability API. And one of the uh, ways that we make that happen is by making the visualizations that we have capable of working within Nebula. So uh, in the beginning of 2021, there were about five visualizations that had been what I call nebulized. Uh, we've tripled that and we're almost at about 21 uh, to 22 visualizations. And there's a very, very healthy roadmap of additional visualizations that are going to be coming out in the in, in 2022. And we'll be publishing a compatibility matrix and some additional information around that roadmap on click.dev in the near future. The other thing here is that there's been a significant documentation enhancement for Nebula.js on click.dev. So the, uh, the, the client team that ma uh, maintains Nebula has been working uh, tremendously to not only continue to build out features and capabilities and watching my feed all, all the time in GitHub and they're working on Listbox right now and filter panes and all sorts of other uh, capabilities and making those native to, to Nebula.js, 
but they're also providing a lot of documentation so that you can see all the properties that are available inside of Nebula. Uh, there's a new uh, plugin capability inside of Nebula that allows you to take a chart that's one of our open source charts and actually build uh, a plugin, uh, build plugins for them. So you can add additional capabilities to the charts that already exist. And we're hoping to open source more of those uh, visualizations as we continue to uh, refactor them and make them native Nebula uh, library charts. Um, some of you, I, I know many folks in the Click ecosystem work on the front end, are web developers, and are embedding analytics. You come from that that Click world, but we also have a very cool tool that helps on the back end and management of uh, Click infrastructure and Click products, and that's Click CLI. You may have been familiar with the one from the uh, from the Windows world that Adam Hayden uh, built. It's a PowerShell library. Uh, we, uh, in some respects, adopted his idea, uh, built a, a new Click CLI that was based on the core control that was part of Click Core. And this gives you a tremendous amount of functionality to interact with not only uh, Click Cloud, but also uh, ClickSense Client Managed in the QRS API and uh, the engine whether it's on an on uh, on a client managed installation or inside of a click cloud so there is lots of opportunities for you to work on either migration scenarios using click cli uh, and also to uh, through scripting uh, programmatically uh, make changes to to environments and to apps themselves um, from a from a click cloud perspective, we've instituted rate limiting. This is a really important thing, and it's not just important for click, but it's important for you as developers as well to know what the limits are for the types of requests that you can make and and uh, where uh, you might get throttled, where you may get uh, may have to augment your code in terms of uh, the the performance of the applications that you're uh, you're building. So we haven't implement, there's only one rate limit that we've actually implemented so far, and that's on the new reporting service. And we are in the process of updating our documentation to, to uh, show what those limits are. But for right now, we're looking at the API calls that are being made, and we're going to be uh, publishing API rate limits and, and basically giving people a window to understand when those API rate, rate limits are going to kick in. We don't want to flip a switch overnight and all of a sudden have your uh, solution stop working. I mentioned earlier, I, I work in API governance uh, and we've done a lot of refactoring on API governance work because the way that I've looked at that is, and, and I know from the feedback that I've gotten over the, heat, over the past few years, it's really hard to find out when Click deprecates or changes APIs or releases new APIs. By refactoring the API governance as we have, we're going to be able to provide better external communication. We'll be able to link that with the change log that we have right now in click.dev, as well as notify you when, uh, do, do a better job basically of notifying you when there's going to be changes or deprecations to APIs so that you can prepare for what changes you need to make in order to make your experience uh, seamless with our platform. And then we've added a number of different features. We've added webhook capabilities. Uh, some of you uh, participated in OAuth 2 early access program last year, which is very helpful in terms of guiding our, uh, our current roadmap for OAuth 2. And we continue to work on new flavors like machine to machine and single page applications. Um, some of you have, uh, were part of a pilot of Click Cloud developer tenants. Uh, and then we've also started refreshing a number of our developer tools. So tools that you've found in DevHub or have been part of the Click Open Source community in the past, we're starting to move those over to click.dev and actually showcase them. And I'll, and I'll show a couple of those in a second. And then Depankar and Gertrude have started to build out a new tutorial series on, on our Click YouTube channel. It's called Click Hello World. We're starting off by introducing topics of like Nebula and Picasso and what you can do, but we'll be digging into specific topics and certainly looking forward to your feedback to, to hear what it is you want to see uh, for the content that, uh, that, that we'll produce there. Because here's the thing, right? We've done all this really great stuff, but working with APIs is hard, right? And technology is always changing. And so it's incumbent upon us as, as stewards of, of the APIs and of the developer community here at Click to inform you of those changes, to be 
uh, to be more engaged and to provide you with what you need in order to be successful uh, mm -hmm. as, as, as people that are extending and building out uh, this, this vibrant ecosystem. And so what we need to do is we need to rally uh, together uh, to that end and, and collaborate to really work to make working with Click easy so you can do it fast, making it scale so that anyone can do it, and then making it a habit so that everyone keeps doing it, right? We're, we, as a community, we want to be uh, lifting each other up, but we also want to be able to provide people with solutions that helps make uh, make working with Click easier and make make you want to interact with those experiences more often. So when we get into 2022, the key theme for us is really about making it easier to embed and extend Click Cloud. Right? We have a tremendous opportunity as uh, the past few years have shown us. The move to cloud is is something that has definitely accelerated in in many of our uh, enterprise customers and and we want to make sure that we're providing the right tooling uh, in order to support that. So we're in the midst of building out a new platform SDK. Uh, that platform SDK is going to do things like making authenticating to Click Clouds a, a whole lot easier. Uh, personally, I've had an experience where I've been building uh, sample uh, solutions on glitch.com and I'll show you those in a few minutes. Uh, and those, uh, the, the authentication, it works, but it's, it's hard. And we, the team has been working really hard, has been working really hard to make it easier. And there are some early returns on that, that I'll be able to share with you. Um, we're also working on documentation. We recognize that our documentation, uh, is in a lot of different places. We have API documentation on help.click.com. We've got documentation on click.dev. And what we need to do is we need to merge uh, the best of those. So we're going to be uh, working with our content and media team to uh, migrate uh, a lot of our documentation for developers from help.click.com to click.dev to really solidify click.dev as the developer portal that you use when you want to go ahead and you want to embed and you want to extend the Click ecosystem. And then when it comes to extending that ecosystem, uh, I know you've heard, uh, probably heard about marketplace or different conversations about how we're going to make uh, solutions available to customers through our cloud. That continues to be a theme that we're researching throughout 2022. Uh, and you're going to see updates to uh, some guidelines some policies and certainly uh, really trying to become more transparent and clear about uh, the ways you want to be able to uh, that that essentially make it as efficient as possible for you to become part of that click cloud ecosystem. So what's the call to action, right? We've got some new stuff out there. We've got some different stuff out there and we need your feedback. And we recognize we, we need to do a better job of communicating when these things are coming out. First thing is platform SDK. Uh, there's a package out on NPM. Uh, and the first thing that it does is it uses TypeScript to basically make authenticating and connecting to uh, click easier. And uh, it, it's starting off just using the interactive login uh, or API keys, but we're going to be adding uh, JWT support as well as OAuth2 support as those uh, capabilities uh, uh, come online. So you'll be able to leverage those capabilities through the SDK to make authenticated connections. And then the platform SDK is going to start off being backward compatible to Enigma as well as the other libraries that we have that require authentication. And as we learn more from the, the usage and your feedback, we're going to continue to build out additional capabilities inside of the platform SDK. One example I can give you is uh, we have a number of different APIs inside of capability. And we also have the ability inside of Enigma to provide mix-ins. Well, we have a lot of mix-ins in our back pocket here at Click. And what I'm trying to do and what I want to do and we're working with the team is to actually surface those mix-ins because we notice that, and, and it's no surprise that a number of our uh, a number of our solutions that you're building are trying to mimic client behaviors. 
So why not give you those tools that make mimicking those client behaviors easier, uh, easily uh, available to you? So we're going to provide that in TypeScript first, but we're also looking at other languages. Python is definitely something that we're very interested in and we'd like to get your feedback as to whether or not that should be our priority or if there's another language you think we should be investigating. Um, there's Kixplorer, and that's basically the Engine API Explorer, but now it's on the internet, so you don't need the Dev Hub anymore. And you can connect to ClickCloud with it, and you can actually use the same Engine API Explorer that you know and love from the Dev Hub uh, on Client Managed now with ClickCloud, which is super cool. Uh, Nebula, uh, I know the feedback. You want more charts? Totally get that. But what I'm interested in is the chart capabilities that you're interested in, right? I know exporting data is one thing, being able to print is another, and those are definitely uh, roadmap items that uh, we're working on, especially uh, printing for third-party extensions. Uh, that is something that uh, is currently active in analysis. And then we're also looking at, you know, what tools you're building. Uh, Depanker and Gertrude are super interested in collaborating with you to see how you're using our Click APIs, how you're interacting with our platform. Uh, and we wanna be able to showcase them and evangelize them uh, with you either through this Q&A or other types of live build sessions or office hours that, they, uh, that they'll uh, connect and work on. So I realized that was a bit more than 20 minutes, Katie. Uh, it was about 27 minutes. That's all right. <laughs> but, uh, but now we've got uh, the next half hour for Q&A and it yeah. looks like uh, there's a bunch of questions that got queued up. Yeah, well, we, we had a lot of chat going on while you were talking. Um, we had some answers to our question of um, what does everyone want from Click to make their development experience super awesome? Um, I'm going to do my call to action for everyone to put your questions, if you have questions, into the Q&A panel. And we'll ask those as we go along. Make sure you get them in so we get to them in this session. I have a few frequently asked questions that I'll use to kick us off. I know you touched on some of these in your presentation, but hopefully we can dive in where necessary. Um, given that the capabilities API seems to be on the fence for retirement. When can we expect Nebula JS to be a full-time replacement with 100% parity? Who wants to take uh, that one on? The parity question. Always the parity question. Here's the thing. There's a couple of there's a couple of angles here. There's there's always this idea that capability API is uh, going to be deprecated. And let's face it, someday it will be. Uh, I, I can't say I haven't tried in the last two years to deprecate the capability API, but the fact of the matter is a lot of you use it and a lot of you love it. And the, uh, the, the fact that that's the case changes the calculus on when we actually let it go. And I think the second part of the question about Nebula is really, uh, important. Um, I think that Nebula is a tremendous library and the progress that the client team has made over the last year, definitely uh, in my mind, if you're building any new net new projects right now, you should absolutely be using Nebula JS. If you're building any new visualizations, you should absolutely be using Nebula JS. There's just uh, a lot more capability that the team is building into that uh, library every day. That's the library that we're investing in. And uh, like I said, the ability to have the plugin architecture, the ability to have themes uh, directly inside of the code, the fact that you can embed a visualization without having to load required JS and all of those uh, uh, pieces of, of code ahead of time, it's uh, it, it can be a real time saver. Um, and then the fact that uh, and this is something that came out just in the last two weeks. Uh, the client team release has released in the latest release of Nebula JS uh, TypeScript types uh, for Nebula and for Picasso. So now you have uh, better integration with tools like Visual Studio Code when it comes to using uh, Nebula and building out uh, web applications where you're embedding visualizations as well as uh, uh, creating uh, new ones for the platform. So when it comes to parity, uh, I, 
I, I always think back to something Anthony Dayton said a long time ago when people moved from ClickView to ClickSense. It's about S curves, right? And so what happens is, is in order for you to make leaps, you have a new S curve and you start off a little bit with a little bit less functionality, but then you start to have this mass acceleration uh, before you start to flatten back out again. And we are definitely uh, going off like a rocket ship with, with Nebula JS. Uh, so uh, definitely think that's the direction folks should head in. It's a great way to think of it. We have a question from Paulina. It says, are these awesome enhancements backward compatible with ClickSense client managed version? That's a fabulous question, Paulina. So the answer is, it depends. Um, when it comes to Nebula and Picasso, uh, the answer is yes. That's the great thing is that the client libraries between client managed and our cloud product are nearly identical. So Capability API works on both, Nebula works on both, Picasso works on both, as well as Enigma, because you'll use Enigma to connect to the engine. There are some different, there are some nuances between how you connect with Enigma to a cloud session versus a client managed session. Uh, so it's going to be nuances like that. But we have some of those examples inside of the documentation to help you. And um, uh, transitioning, again, once we move to platform SDK, transitioning from something like using client managed to using Click Cloud will become a whole lot easier because it's just going to be uh, a connect call uh, and a configuration that you're passing through, not necessarily having to worry about those those nuances uh, specifically. So that will definitely make any transition from client managed to click cloud uh, a whole lot easier. Yeah, thank you, Paulina. Everyone put your questions in the Q&A. Um, I'm gonna take us a, a step back just to somewhat stay on the Nebula JS topic uh, because we have another one here that says, should I migrate my visualization extension from the extension API to Nebula JS? If so, what tools do you have available to help accelerate the process? So I, I know that there are a couple of tutorials uh, on click.dev that talk about that migration. Uh, I have a desire to create more documentation that can help with that change in that migration. Uh, I, I can't say that it's a, a simple change. The Nebula does uh, things a little bit differently with respect to the actual visualization rendering and how you would write, uh, I think, uh, certain aspects of uh, the visualization capabilities because there are different uh, ways that you instantiate using the layout and using different effects and that sort of thing. But one thing that's consistent between um, the way that you build extensions now and the way that you build extensions inside of Nebula is property panel, which is arguably one of the more complex uh, components of building out a, a visualization. Uh, the, property plan the property panel uh, code for Nebula is exactly the same as the extension API. So you can actually take your property panels definition files and use those uh, verbatim inside of uh, a Nebula uh, visualization. So that's, I think, one of the, the key helpers uh, in terms of accelerating that migration is that that's one thing that you're not necessarily having to do a tremendous amount of refactoring upon. Right. Thanks. And I see Dupankar put a resource in the chat for everyone. Yeah. So go ahead, check that out, save it. Do you want to speak to it more at all, Dupankar? Oh yeah, I mean, it's basically what Jeff mentioned. I guess we are just awesome. working on the approach of how we can like make the process of migration, specifically the people who have developed something in extension API, how do we like make sure like those APIs, uh, those extensions get into the level of framework since it's modern and it's like more flexible. So I think we are working on the approach and I think this tutorial is like just a heads up like to get to know of like basically there's a comparative analysis of what we can do with the two, two frameworks, the past and the present one. And I think we really showed us some of the approaches. Great, thank you. All right, and we have a question from Goran. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, but we love your engagement in the chat and now we love your question. It says regarding the new click CLI, I like that 
it supports both cloud and client managed, but the docs on click.dev doesn't seem to reflect this. And does the latest click.dev work with client managed engine? Um, Jeff hinted at this being the case. So he yep. wants to clarify so that. I, I, can, I can take that one. So Goran, it's a great question. So in terms of the engine API documentation and the engine spec, Yes, uh, that is uh, that is compatible with client managed. There's no difference between the engine. I think that that's uh, uh, we we have we're in the process of re uh, evaluating how we talk about our stability index and the way that we uh, classify APIs. And we often mention that the engine API uh, is the only is like one of the only locked APIs that we have, and that's because it's uh, it. it if it's changing, it's because there's lots of new features that are being added. Not a whole lot of deprecations are happening in that library. And uh, for the most part, those capabilities are uh, are surfacing themselves in both, uh, both client managed as well as the cloud platform. And then your second, uh, your first question uh, about uh, the QRS methods and more of the client managed, that's a really good uh, good point. One of the things that I'm hoping to do as part of this documentation consolidation is to move uh, uh, aspects of the uh, client managed uh, infrastructure uh, or the client managed APIs into click.dev so that we, once again, we have that consolidated place for, uh, for all of that API documentation. And I see inside the chat that um, there may be some newer API methods that aren't available in client managed to depending on what the feature functionality is. So thanks, Andre, for that clarification. Thanks. All right. Let me jump into some of these other questions. Again, feel free to keep them flowing on your end, everyone. Um, so let's see. I've seen Auth2 support is being added to Click Cloud. However, I can't seem to make it work with my current solutions and capability APIs. Anyone speak yes. to that further? Yep, I can take that one as well. Uh, so we do see that there are some challenges with using OAuth2 with the, uh, with the capability API. And one of the ways that we'll be addressing that is with the introduction of, of single page application support, that should make it much easier for you to take advantage of capability API and the OAuth2 capabilities that we're building out. That's something that we're hoping to have available later this year. Um, there has been some work uh, that the team's been trying to troubleshoot to see whether or not we can make uh, capability API connectivity work with the uh, current generic OAuth 2 implementation. Uh, I don't have it right in front of me, but I can definitely take it as a follow-up to uh, talk to the team and see if there's anything that we can document that, that could help with that. Um, Katie, do you mind if I take the screen and just do yeah. uh, a, a quick... Uh, a quick demo of uh, of Kixplorer. Um, okay, so I believe you can see, uh, you should see something that's just, I turned it from light mode to dark mode and it says request and response up at the top. This is Kixplorer. Kixplorer, as, as many of you may remember, is uh, member it as is the Engine API Explorer. Uh, the team's done some uh, re uh, reimagining of the user interface, and we have some additional updates that are uh, are going to be coming out in the near future. Uh, but the nice thing is, is I can go ahead and I can log in. Creating a new connection is as simple as adding a host, and that could be uh, to a virtual proxy connection. Um, on client managed, or if you're using Click Cloud, you just specify a, a web integration ID where you've uh, assigned uh, HTTPS kixplorer.click.dev uh, to your tenant inside of the uh, web integrations. And then you'd be able to put the code that you get here and you'll be able to connect. And then you get to uh, access your applications and you can see that I've opened up the demo app and you'll see different things will light up on the on the left hand side here that you can start to use. And you you see our our old macros that we've always had as far as listing sheets. And I can go ahead and run that, and that will go and give me all of the information relative to the properties of all the sheets inside of my app. And then you can see that new things start to highlight. So if I look at generic object, I can click on select object, and you can see it gives me a list of all the different uh, items that are actually in my 
uh, all the different sheets that are in my app. So I can now click on grid chart and get the layout of the grid chart. And that will, uh, that should give me the, or I think I had to select this maybe. Uh, maybe it's not working. Uh, oh, sorry. I select the object. And then what I can do is I can go ahead and I can now click get layout, execute that. And that will give me the layout. Sorry, I just needed to, to walk through the methods. So you get a list of all the methods tied to that object, and then you can start to work with it. And then you can also see that there are different things that I can do with global. And what's nice is as I am looking at the different methods on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side, the documentation from click.dev shows up. So I have documentation in line. And then as I highlight, I don't have anything that's uh, a long set of documentation, but if I wanted to, I can go ahead and as I scroll through the different property names here on the request, it will actually scroll through and uh, bring in line the, uh, the item uh, in the documentation. Um, another, uh, um, in I otherwise hard to use in lockdown client hosted environments that are behind firewalls. I'm trying to think, Gorin, how to answer that in that uh, I will have to find out if it's the same. Catwalk is a little bit different. We're, we're working on refactoring some of the ways that you connect with Catwalk, but basically you should be able to uh, just use Kixplorer, it uses port 443 to connect. And as long as you've got your web integration ID and you have, uh, it, what will happen is if you're not logged into Click, it will perform an interactive session. So if I log out here, it will actually kick me back to uh, to the login page. So now if I go to Kixplorer and I choose Jog and I log in, it kicks me here, I log in. And then once I log in, it should kick me back to Kixplorer and let me in. So um, for client managed, I don't have a client managed environment up and running, but uh, I can get an answer for you on that. Great, thanks. Yeah. I think now that we're at almost the 15 minute mark left, I think would be a good time to launch our poll. Um, cool. This is the first time we've done it in Q&A, so everyone bear with us. Um, <laughs> So we have a question out here on when do you plan to migrate to Nebula and Enigma from Capability API for embedded analytics? So feel free to, you know, answer that questions. Let us know what you think. Um, we'll take our, our percentages back with us. Um, all right. And I see that while we were on the Kicks floor topic, Andre also posted some details as well. So thank you, Andre, for being our little engine in the background. We really appreciate it. Um, let's see. Let me pull up some of our other questions. Thank you, everyone, for answering these poll questions. We're getting more and more information out of you. We love it. Um, here we go. When are, and I know you mentioned this in the beginning of your presentation, Jeff, but when are capabilities with API being deprecated? It's been rumored for years what's going to happen, but when do we have any time frame or things that people can look out for for that? Yep, so great question. Right now, there, uh, right now we have no, no plans to deprecate the capability API. We're still reviewing uh, based on what we're, prioritizing for platform SDK, uh, the updates that are coming in Nebula, uh, and, and evaluating when it makes sense uh, to start uh, the deprecation. We're looking at different things we may do. So you may see that certain aspects of capability become deprecated as they become available inside of the platform SDK. So it wouldn't necessarily be a wholesale deprecation of the library, but um, uh, parts. I think also uh, in terms of how much time we're going to provide our customers and our partners to move, it's going to be a pretty sizable uh, chunk of time. So it's not like we'll uh, issue a, a, a deprecation and basically say, hey, you've got six months to move everything over. We know that a lot of our customers have embedded analytics and embedded applications that are currently using the capability API, and it performs 
uh, super good. And so we want to make sure that um, you are able to continue to use uh, those solutions and don't run into a situation where all of a sudden they stop working. We also want to be able to provide uh, that path um, to, to help you move to the more framework agnostic capabilities that are in Nebula because we recognize the web applications that you're running today uh, are, are using a number of modern different frameworks, whether that's um, Vue or React or Angular in its later versions, as well as uh, some newer libraries like Next.js and Svelte and, uh, and others. Great. Thanks for clearing that up for us. Sure. All right. Let's see. So I'm going to ask this question to Gertrude and to Pankar, since you guys are really helping out with the YouTube series. Um, it says, what are you doing to provide more videos and tutorials on using Click APIs? Can you give us more of an overview on resources that's available out there and what might be coming? Yeah. So yeah, I think the new developer-focused channel that Gertrude uh, shared, I guess, uh, and yes. uh, that, that is kind of like the uh, tar target we have right now. We are starting with a series. We already have started with a series called Hello World, where we focus on all type of developers. The motive here is like to focus on all sort of developers, whether you are just getting started with a platform or we, whether you are, you know, uh, we have already done a lot of work in integration or embedded analytics. Uh, so I think uh, the concepts are different. There is something called Hello World. We also shared something called Making Sense of Click APIs, where we kind of deep dive into and show people, uh, for example, how to use the Nebula CLI to do you know better uh, deployment and stuff. So I think the whole point of this series would be to like you know target these different motivations. And uh, a couple of these videos are also part of the Click Help Help the Click dot com videos uh, series. So people who are in the enterprise version, if you're you know, looking to uh, get into Picasso or Nebula and what they are, you can probably like you know, get into that as well. So help.click.com has video section that directly you know, migrates our developer series and replicates that. So that is one that I can share the link with as well. Uh, but really the focus is on the community. And I guess um, Jeff probably might give some more idea on the, you know, the glitch sandbox uh, environment that we have. I saw his screen popping up, so probably like, uh, we want to want to evangelize even the community wants. I think uh, if you have something that is really cool, if you want to show people how to do things, this is really like a really interesting platform for us. Should we hint on what to expect? Some of the content that uh, people could see in the coming weeks or months, or we keep that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah should people join able... for. Let's yeah. tell them. <laughs> Yeah, I think we have working. We have been working. Gertrude and me also have been working on a couple of things. I think uh, Click CLI. I think it's Gertrude probably that's her focus. And then I'm working on the rest part of things and uh, try to highlight some of the popular APIs. So yeah, Gertrude, if you have anything to add, feel free. Yeah. Well, yeah, um, it's mostly going to be and some of the other things that we've talked about during this session. So it would be good to have a look out on that because um, that's. That will be our go-to place for a lot of uh, video tutorials on that. And like Dipanka had said, it's also going to be on a, a focus for people that are new to click, new developers to click, and we want to make sure everyone is covered. So yeah. Right, and I'm sure as we get more and more questions and have more and more sessions, we'll be able to build more documents around it. So that's why we really appreciate everyone's participation here today. Um, lots exciting happening in 2022 for our developer world. Um, another thing that you did touch briefly on about Marketplace, but there is a question here that says, what's going on with the TED program and Click Cloud? I've heard about a Marketplace, but I don't know much except for speculation. Yeah, this is more of a stay tuned. I know that the partner uh, and tech, the tech partner team is working on some uh, new programs that they want to implement to help accelerate the adoption of solutions uh, and, and certification, if you will, or readiness for Click Cloud. Uh, they're currently looking at a number of different uh, 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 solutions that are out there, contacting partners, as well as coming up with different uh, uh, 
policies and procedures that they want to refactor as part of a new program that they would implement. In addition to that, from our perspective, we're going to have, I think I mentioned it earlier, new API terms uh, of service, and, and that's going to provide uh, clarity around categorization of APIs, support of APIs, as well as uh, helping, you under, helping you with understanding um, the uh, acceptable use and 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 rate limiting and and those sorts of things, so that you've got a full fully transparent understanding of 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 what you can do uh, with our with our platform from an API perspective. Great. All right, I'm gonna put in my last call for questions. So make sure if you want your answer your question answered, type it in the Q and A right now. Um, I'll go through some of my closing items, my shameless plugs, as I call them. Um, so we have here our next topic for Q&A with Click. It is Tuesday, March 22nd, and it's on Click Reporting Service, which is, you know, one of the newest features that launched in December for our, our enterprise SaaS customers. So be sure to join. Um, again, fill out our survey, give us our feedback if you liked it if you didn't tell us what you want to hear more um, and this will also be available to you in um, the recording that we send a week after so let me see I see one thing in the chat or one thing in the Q&A well can I pull it up or did it go away oh it went away no so it looks like that's pretty much all of our questions today we hope we answered all of them for you um, feel free to message me in community um, if you have any other questions or feedback that we weren't able to get to today. Um, thank you, Jeff. Thank you to Pankar. Thank you, Gertrude, for joining. We really love hearing your expertise and we hope to have more. Any parting words from your end? Well, on the shameless plug um, bit, Great. I could plug our, our Twitter account, the Click, the click Dev account. Great. Is that the handle at ClickDev? Yes. Okay. That's correct, right? <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, yes. it, it's it's called ClickDev, but the handle will be Click Developer. And yeah. uh, that's that's where kind of we share all the latest updates and what's happening with developer stuff. So yeah, something to look out for as well. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. Take a look at that. Take a look at Click.dev. Take a look at the YouTube channel that we shared to all of you. Um, we're really really happy to have you join and we'll see you at the next session. So thank you all. Have a good one. Thank you everyone for your, you, everyone. your time today. Appreciate it. Be safe. Bye. 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 Bye.